there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we create an advanced split screen in Final Cut Pro 10. So this is going to involve learning a lot about layers, how we work with some of the masking tools in Final Cut Pro, and also some keyframes to create some animations um, for our split screens as well. Now we're using only the built-in plugins, um, the built-in effects in Final Cut Pro, so you don't need any external uh, kind of paid for plugins or anything like that uh, for this tutorial. Um, and if you like these kinds of tips and tricks for uh, tutorial reviews or tutorials um, focused on using the tools inside Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button and you'll get a little message every time I post a new video. Um, and if you have any questions or comments about the videos, then I'd love to hear them uh, below. Otherwise, let's dive in and look at how we create an advanced split screen in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's dive in and have a look at how we make this advanced split screen in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, the main tool we're going to be using um, for this is the Draw Mask tool, um, which is a really great tool. And one of the nice things we can do with this is we can animate um, the masking that we do. So let's just drag down a, a few clips into layers here in Final Cut Pro 10. And we're going to turn down the volume uh, for all of these. So I'll do Shift and Z so that we can kind of see a bit more of what's on screen here. And we're going to slow all these clips down. So I'm going to select all of these clips and we're going to go to slow and 50%. And I'm going to reduce the height of the timeline. So if I come to my shortcut across here, I can reduce the timeline height. I can also use um, shift, command and minus to reduce the height there. And if I hold down command and tap R now, it will turn off the retiming. So basically, we've got these uh, three layers of videos, and we're gonna look at how we reveal the layers behind by creating a split screen with the Draw Mask tool. So the first thing we're gonna do is select the topmost layer, and I'm going to come down to my effects on the right-hand side here, and I have a search um, in here already, so I'm gonna clear that, and we're gonna scroll down to our masks where we can find the draw mask tool. So the draw mask tool allows us to draw custom points on our video. Um, and in order to kind of get this first split screen going, we're actually going to zoom out a little bit to 25% just so we can see the edge because we're gonna draw the draw mask, but we're gonna draw it over the edge. So I'm gonna click here once, click down here, click across the right, click up, and then click back here, and that will mask out the shape. Now, I can move the mask around, um, so I can move around the area that I want to keep, um, and I can also offset the X position as well, so the flames um, here in the middle are a bit better, um, so I can kind of offset those there, and I can change the scale as well, and it keep the, the draw mask kind of scaled with it as well. So we're just gonna move these flames across to the right. So now you can see we've got our first kind of split screen um, with this diagonal split screen. Um, and now we're gonna have a look at how we copy and paste this same split screen so we keep that same angle um, for the other clips that we're using. So we're gonna have kind of three different levels of zoom for this uh, barbecue that's happening. So if I select this clip and go to edit, copy, and then select the clip below and go to edit and paste attributes. So about halfway down here. Basically, we're going to paste on the draw mask. So I'm gonna uncheck the transform options and the volume options and hit paste. And that will now paste on the same draw mask um, as we have on the other clip. So. We can do one of two things here. I can either just kind of move this across so it matches the angle, um, or I can move these points across to the right so we keep the angle, but we highlight something across on the, the left-hand side here. So again, I can offset my clip here as well. And now you can see we get this nice split screen with these three different levels of kind of what's going on uh, this street barbecue. Uh, and we can move the background clip as well by using the transform options too. So we can get this centered nicely and hit play. And we have this nice little montage of a split screen of these 
different zoom levels of the, the barbecue grill. So um, I'm going to come to the end of my clips here and just do shift command and B and that is going to blade all these clips and then I'm going to grab my selection tool and just delete these last clips. So we're going to kind of take this a step further now. So at the moment um, we've got these clips here. Now what we might want to do is have these clips come on in order. So basically I might have these clips transition on. So we have the, the wide shot visible and I'm just going to select my bottom clip here and reset the transform position so it's back in the middle. And now if we play this through we have our left hand and then our right hand clip coming on but it would be nice if we animated those as well. And basically I can animate a few things here. So what we want to animate really is the position um, of this clip on the left hand side um, so that it slides on. So up in our inspector on the top right you can see we can animate a number of different features but the transform and the control points in particular the position and the control points are what we want to animate here. So if we have a look at the position here as we move this um, you can see we're moving these position points here. So basically we want to decide how quickly we want our clip to animate on. So I'm going to play this through now to set the timing of this. So I'm going to press play and basically we want it to slide on in this short period of time up to around about here so we get a nice little quick snap on of that clip. So I'm going to animate this backwards. So what that means is I'm going to set my keyframes for the location I want it to finish at first and then move backwards um, so that I can then just slide it off uh, the canvas. So if I keep this clip selected, my playhead's um, a few frames into it, I'll come up to my transform options up here and set a keyframe by clicking the little diamond to the right of the X and Y position there. And now I'll come back to the beginning of my clip and I can either use the slider up here, so just slide that X position off or drag this uh, to the left here. So basically now once we've done that, if we play this through we'll get a nice little quick slide on of that clip on the left hand side and then we'll do the same for this right hand clip. So we're going to slide on from the left and then from the right and if we look at this, this is roughly where we want it to finish as well. So I'm going to select my top clip now come to my transforms and set a keyframe for the position um, a little bit into that clip and then come back to the beginning and now once we've done that we can select that draw mask and drag it off to the right and now we'll get an animation from the left and then from the right. Now if you don't get the timing of your clips um, right from the get-go then if we right click here and go to show video animation you can see we can see the video animation keyframes here. So these are the keyframes that we set and those are the points between which the animation is happening. So if I move these keyframes further apart then my animation will slow right down and if I move them close together then my animation will speed up so it will become a bit snappier. So you can decide on the pacing and timing of your transitions yourself. And we can also do this at the end as well. So if we come to the end of our clip, we'll have these come off together at the same time at the end. So basically, we'll have them slide um, left and right at the same time. So we need to set another keyframe um, just before the end of these clips so that we can slide them off. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the transform options here on both of the clips. So for the position, come to the end of my clips and if I just come to the end of the clip you'll notice we don't see the left and right um, clips here. So I just need to move back one frame so I'm going to tap the left cursor and that will bring me back into those clips and I can now drag that off to the left and drag this off to the right and you can see I'm needing to highlight um, the draw mask in the inspector so that I can do that. So now these will, we quickly come back, these will animate on together and animate off at the same time. So that's the first uh, 
split screen um, and the animation that we're going to do. And then the next split screen and animation we're going to do is going to be more of a revolving um, split screen. So basically, I'm going to drag some more clips uh, down to my timeline. So we'll go ahead in the timeline here and we'll drag these same clips down again. And again, I'll just drop the audio down quickly. Okay, so we've got those three clips stacked up here as well. Um, and now what we're going to do for these clips is we're actually going to, and I'll just come to the end here and use Shift Command and B to slice through the end of those so that we can clip them off at the end. And what we're going to do here um, with each of these clips is actually draw more of a triangular mask so that we can basically have this kind of come on like a almost like a clock in the, the animation. So I'm going to grab my draw mask and drop it onto the top clip. And then I'm going to add some control points here. Okay. Now this center control point that I've got here, I want it to be right in the middle. So I'm going to come across to my control points in my inspector. And you can see I'm moving this point 0.4 um, at the bottom here just by wiggling it around. And I want to set that to 0 and 0. So it's right in the middle of my, my clip here. So when I animate this, um, the kind of clock animation that we're going to do is going to revolve around that midpoint. So we're going to kind of create a little bit of a tapestry of these three clips using this clock wipe. So I'm going to select this clip, go to edit and copy, and select the clip below and then edit and paste attributes. And again, I just want to paste the draw mask, no other effects there. So we'll deselect the audio attributes and paste that on. And so now you can see if I just move these points across to the bottom right, we're basically keeping that midpoint dead center. And um, we've got this nice kind of layout of the split screen here. Um, but everything's kind of connecting in the middle there. So what we're going to do here is we'll, again, just stagger these at the beginning a little bit. Okay, so they're going to come on one at a time. And what we'll do here, we'll start with the second layer here. Um, I'm going to, again, come ahead in time in my clip. And this time I'm working on the, the control points here. So I'm going to add keyframes for my control points. So I've added them in the clip, so this is where it's going to be visible. And then if I come back in time, I'm going to bring my control points very close to one another, so it basically makes that clip almost invisible. So what will happen here as we play through is basically that is going to kind of wipe on like this. And we'll do the same for this clip. So I'll have this wipe on from the top right. So I've come into the middle of the clip or a little bit into that clip, add a keyframe for the control points and then come back in time and then move these clips up to that top right point. So I basically now when these come on, it's going to add a nice little wipe to that as they animate on. And then again, we can do the reverse of that. So we'll have those wipe off together at the end. So I'm going to add a keyframe for the control points up here again in the same spot. So we're using the control points rather than the transforms this time. Come to the end of that clip and then just go back one frame. And now I'll bring these back until they're almost touching and do the same for the top clip. You can see the animation already starting to happen there. And now basically we're going to get a little wipe reveal and then they'll disappear nicely at the same time. So that's basically um, some really cool ways in which we can use the draw mask tool to do some advanced split screens and you kind of have a lot of scope in terms of creativity um, with this particular tool. 
in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, if you do have any questions about the draw mask or other masking tools in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do leave a comment below or if you have suggestions for new tutorials or effects that you've seen that you would uh, like explained, then please do leave a comment and a link below. Um, and thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.